All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you didn't see the previous episode, we went ahead and made the blower adapter and also went ahead and worked on the death trap, which is still parked on the nice, dirty side of the shop over there. And in today's episode, we've got to go ahead and get the JD squared tube bender mounted up so we can go ahead and bend some tubes, which is over there in the corner. And we got to wait for Jason to finish his food. <laughs> are new to the channel we're working on our third project that is a burnout vehicle and this one is a 1967 Ford F100 that is getting a blown LS swapped into it which is going to be super sick this thing is going to be mechanically injected running methanol and we're not hoping for big horsepower I mean honestly on the dyno I'd like to see maybe 850 horsepower 8, 850 I think that's more than doable we've done these naturally aspirated before for people and with a cam a little bit of head work you can make 500 horse with an LF, so definitely, definitely in the ballpark of doable. But here's what we've got done. As you've seen, we went ahead and mounted the JD squared bender, and we also went ahead and bent and welded in our radiator support tab, or hoop, I guess we could call it. Now I've got to get a trough made because unlike my radiator where I had side mounting tabs, I just can't talk today either, we're going to make a trough in the bottom for the radiator to set in, and then we'll make some brackets that come down to bolt that radiator in there. So that is done. We need to add the extension pieces off the side here. Not sure if I caught that on camera or not, but I went ahead and made them. And these are just like my truck where they're going to go onto the radiator support and they will come off here. Then we'll need a flat plate off the left hand side where my hand is. That will give us a mounting point for our fenders. Now again, this cap is going to be switched out with the one from my parents place, but we're going to work at getting the rest of the stuff welded on there. I also went ahead and somewhat fabbed up a lower hoop i guess you could call it under the blower snout and the intentions of this are nothing to do with strengthening the frame but however that will help even though the motor is bolted across from it directly above the intentions are probably either passenger or driver's side we're going to mount our mechanical fuel pump which jason's going to run some of those parts over here and then we're going to steal the mandrel off of the camaro because i won't have one until saturday and i'd like to keep working on this and then when we mount that, we're going to have to have a loop back, which I've shown before. I'll show you again in a minute. And we have to have a cable coming out here. And the intentions of this tube are to put the latch that's going to hold the outer sheathing of the cable. So that way when you pull the handle, the sheathing doesn't move. So I needed something out here. And again, I want to get this frame powder coated or painted somehow, spray paint, whatever the case is. So I've got to keep trucking along. So now on this fuel pump... As I mentioned, Jason has the fitting for this, so we can change this over. So it is going to be a 12AN to 12AN, and I already had this from when I was going to go mechanical on mine, which is 12 to 12. So what this does is when I pull the handle inside the truck, it's going to pull this out here, shut the fuel off, which is closed here. And when the motor is running and the pump is continuously pumping fuel pressure through, you do not want to cavitate this pump deadheaded, you know, because the motor is still slowly winding down. So what you do is when you close this valve off, which blocks the flow, it actually redirects it back through and basically just makes a continuous loop as the motor is revving down. Well, it actually revs up because it leans out, but as the motor is shutting down, needless to say, that will actually take care of that. So we need that on there. And then this is where I need to come up with some kind of mount from there. I don't have any of the tabs here. 
Like I said, Jason ordered several of those and then we can get that mounted up. I did, however, also make a hoop underneath the rear end. I'll go ahead and lift it up now and show you that as well. So coming underneath the truck here, I did not show this, but like I said before, Jason did get the slip yoke. So once we get that rear carrier pulled out of the Scarebird truck that we were building, the twin turbo F100, we can drop that in there. And then this is the rear, I guess, like I said, I call it a hoop section, hoop bar. And the main intentions of this bar that needs fully welded in was to actually weld to these plates here. It's not much contact on there, but you know, it can hit a little spot here on the bottom and then wrap around the back of it and then hit a little spot on the top as well. I know it's kind of dark underneath here. And then that does provide some, I guess, trap if the drive shaft was a break in the back and try and, you know, plumb it up through the box. Really the drive shaft loop that you're really concerned about if you're drag racing or anything like that is actually having a drive shaft loop up on the drive shaft here. You don't want that to break down and then you're gonna pogo the truck or car, or whatever it is. So that's everything there. So I need to finish welding this bar, weld it to those plates. And I think I missed a spot back here on this little shock mount piece here. I need to touch that up and I kind of did skim through everything else and I think it's looking pretty good. The only last thing I might touch up is these plates were split in half because we already had the flanges on the end of the tube. So maybe I'll just go ahead and touch those up. I don't think they're gonna go anywhere, but just for a peace of mind. And then, yeah, I, I'm trying to think if there's anything else, guys. Oh, there is one more, now that I think of it. We need to cap off these tubes. Minor point, but again, don't want water inside of there or anything like that. So definitely need to cap those off. And then we should be good to go. As far as getting everything welded on, um, you know, maybe make a, deal to come from here i don't know if it needs to be welded necessarily ah crap see I, the more i keep walking around which is good documenting it need to finish this cross member for the transmission we got to cut that out slightly more so that way we don't have any issues getting the motor in and out but i think at this point i'm going to really not sure what i'm going to do jason's going to come over he's got a lot of stuff I say a lot of stuff, but he's got the spacer that's gonna go behind the blower pulley down here because I just have three quarter inch hot rolled steel ones. He's got that aluminum spacer. I did get bolts for the upper. So the belt is exactly where it's gonna be. I got the bolts for the water pump. No point in putting them in because obviously this is just mock-up. But yeah, I think we're kind of dwindling away at things. Did get wheel spacers because if you guys are trying to put, not that anybody I don't think is building a Ford F100 currently, putting Mustang wheels on it, but if you are, these are a 2015 Mustang GT wheel. Um, they do not fit. We actually have spacers behind here to make them fit, or not spacers, washers. So Jason went ahead and ordered some wheel spacers. You probably can't see the gap in there, but there's a slight gap in there. So those are here as well. So maybe we can test some of this stuff out. It should work, but obviously we need to try it because I don't want to be at the last minute. So goals for this video, just to recap. We need to finish welding the frame. We got to get it painted. And then we need to start reassembly and that includes putting the other cab on and front clip if we can do it and then we got to get that motor done so we can get it on the dyno and test all this mechanical injection stuff out we have no clue where we're at no clue what the hell we're even doing so we got to get going on it boys all right stay tuned let's move forward some updates as you can see here went ahead and had a i guess we'll call it like a trough made had this bent up in a U-channel shape, and then obviously fit it around the radiator support bar. Now I do need to get two more straps made to go from the top of the radiator here, down to the holes in this U-channel trough. And then the top one that Jason already had on this radiator worked just fine. So this hole is slotted down here to give it a little bit of play, it's slotted up there. That needs welded on the bottom side when that's taken out. So I think with enough rambling on now, because it is a new day, kind of left off from the other day. We have Jason's right here. Jason's new mandrel that goes into the crank hub and one of the pulleys that's on there. I just kind of slipped, slipped that on there. That's gonna be hopefully for the power steering. But yeah, no, we're gonna go ahead now and let's get this bolted up on there. So that way we can make sure we've got clearance on everything down here and then We've got to get started on mounting up this mechanical fuel pump, and then Jason's going to get a power steering pump ordered. Probably get one of those, not a Saginaw, but like the newer style GM ones for the reservoir. It's kind of just a small compact deal. See if we can get one of those, but let's go ahead and get the mandrel in. 
get the fuel pump pulled out so we can get some of that stuff going, get the cross member welded in there so we can maybe see about routing a cable and getting all that stuff done. All right, let's get to it. As you've seen there, all that monkeying around, putting these pulleys and stuff on here, and then ended up messing that up. I didn't get the bracket put on before I put the pulley on. Slipped that back off there, and I was trying to decide between the passenger and passenger over here, I should say, and driver's side, and I ended up opting for the passenger side. Could be good, could be bad, I don't know. But you know what, it's mounted there. The bracket actually worked good. It just seemed like there was less interference with stuff in the way. Also went ahead off camera, got a couple holes drilled here so we could get the cable bracket mounted. That seems to work pretty good, you know, pull this, closes that valve, and then when you push the uh, T-handle in, which I've just got it poked through the cab through the master cylinder hole there, this is like 10 miles long of a cable, so we're going to have to do something different there. And then this tubing here fits right between our loop back line, and then I also went ahead and got a second tube cut which you can see down in here, spacer, whatever you want to call it. And then I did the old little trick where I took the second bolt, put a dab of grease on the end. I already wiped it off. Put a dab of grease on the end and then push that in there. So that way I've got this one marked out. Obviously this one, I ended up drilling that down just a little bit further. Um, kind of intentional, it wasn't really, I mean, actually this is a half inch ID tube on a three eighths bolt. So I could slide this up and make it pretty close, but I opted to go down just slightly below my mark. And then, yeah, I think our belt alignment looks pretty damn good, to be honest. I mean, I don't have any of this stuff set here, so like this on the crankshaft can be moved. And there is some play in this pulley as well. And then with this bolt in there, in case there's anybody questioning, we don't need a lot of play. So we've got some slight adjustment here to loosen it, to get the belt off. And we've got plenty to go the other way, but this is the only belt that they list for an aeromotive pump. Obviously you can get whatever pitch belt this is and whatever length you want, but that's the same as I run on my truck. So that way we'd have a universal bolt or belt between the two. And then we have to finish up this clamp by drilling and tapping that. We'll have to take that over to my brothers for that. And I don't think there's anything else you've missed. Took the radiator back out, obviously. So now my goal is to take this bolt out, get this hole drilled, and then basically we should be mounted up. And then I don't think I showed this. Jason did order a, we'll just say a small fuel cell is actually what it is. But we're thinking about using this as our surge tank up front. Um, it sounds like we need to mount that somewhere. So I'm thinking maybe off of this driver's side. And then we can bring a line down and 90 it to the bottom of the pump. If you can see that fitting right there. Well, focus on my finger. And then the feed will come up here to the back of the barrel valve on this back side here. And then we'll have to just maybe loop that down and around behind here. And then maybe we can just do like a 180 fitting or something. Or no, sorry, it's gotta go here, duh. It's been a long day. All right, well, let's get that pulled off. Let's get the other hole drilled. And then the last thing I think I maybe wanna try and do is clean this all off. Maybe bring the TIG welder over here, get the gas tank on it. But I think I'll wait on that just to make sure that that is exactly where we want it. 
I would like to really TIG weld those on there so they're permanent. I don't think they're going to get in the way when we pull the motor out, out ever in the future. So, all right, enough rambling. Let's get back to it. Well, we're out in the shop again today, getting the truck ready to go to paint. As you can see, we got the box off, we got the rear end out, we've got the cab on jack stands. So that is all good to go. I went ahead and touched up the rest of the spots we needed to weld, as far as around that shock tab there, and around that new crossover hoop tube and the four link brackets. Got the front end out, and Jason is going ahead and he's cutting off the sway bar end links right now. We got new ones anyways. Hopefully. And we want to have, yeah, hopefully we do. Dime a dozen for a Crown Vic, so we're not worried about that. But we want to get that painted as well. So I think that's everything. He loaded up the uh, pieces that go on the front top side of the Crown Vic, the upper control arms, all the panhard bar and four link bars. So I think that's going to do it for this video. And the next one, not to drag this out, but you know, it's good for us to document our build series as well. And then we're going to get it put back together. And we got a surprise for what it's going to be. Well, we don't know if it's going to turn out good, but we'll see what they come up with. And then might be some changes to the truck itself. We got plenty of time for all this stuff, guys. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Let me know down below if you think you know what we're going to do. Probably a dub idea, but we're going to do it anyways. All right, we'll see you in the next one.